these next 45 days are, are going to be uh, packed with violence. Hell yeah. There's going to be bloodshed irregardless. The United States is a violent country, and we are the largest all-black international coalition militia on the planet. So I'm about an hour outside Atlanta in the countryside on my way to meet some members of an organization called the Three Percenters. And their leader out here is a guy called Chris Hill. And all I know about him is that he's a former soldier and he goes by the code name General Blood Agent. How are you doing? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Three percenters make the disputed claim that just three percent of American colonists fought the British in the revolution. They're described by civil rights groups as far-right, anti-government white supremacists, something Chris has invited us here to deny. So today we're going to be going to the uh, woods, we're going to be um, working on pistol drills, uh, rifle drills. What are you training for? People may try to come and um, take what you got, so we want to be able to uh, protect what we have or to move and make contact with the threats and um, um, take out the bad guys. Precisely who the enemy is ranges from Black Lives Matter and anti-fascists to any Democrat who wants gun control. Lord knows what's going to happen uh, November 4th if, uh, you know, when people wake up and Donald Trump has been elected president, the left is going to um, absolutely lose their minds. Cities are going to burn. And what happens if it goes the other way? I hope the silent majority would rise up and uh, you know, stand against um, uh, a uh, Biden uh, presidency, if, especially if there's an allegation of fraud. If on election night there's no clear result and neither Trump nor Biden concedes, these militias are expecting to be out on the streets and you can see how things might go wrong. I want to correct the, uh, the myths and misconceptions about what 3%ers and what 3% militia is really all about. The myths being what? That every 3% militiaman is a neo-Confederate, Nazi, white supremacist, anti-government uh, hillbilly running around playing Call of Duty in the woods. Are there any of them? No, I'm a freaking Marine Corps veteran and uh, I'm doing what I do. What do you think of what happened to George Floyd? In my opinion, the officers should not be charged uh, with murder and should not be uh, you know, imprisoned uh, for that. Earlier this month, militias gathered in Louisville, Kentucky, at the same time as anti-racist protesters demanded justice for Breonna Taylor, a black woman shot dead in her home by police. There was shouting and pushing, but no real violence. Close by, a new militia was also gathering, entirely lawfully, to demand justice. All its members are black. I'll call in and they have a charismatic leader called Grandmaster Jay. He isn't easy to meet face to face. Move, move, move! I'm in a retail park on the outskirts of Atlanta, and this is the rather unlikely setting where I've been told I could get to meet some of the most important people in black militia and black power. Black power! Black power! Black power! Black power! They had come for the funeral of Hashim Nzinga, one of the leaders of the new Black Panther Party. Taliba Tunde joined this movement six years ago after the notorious police killing in Ferguson. I got into this when I saw Mike Brown get killed and they left him laying in the middle of the street for six minutes straight and didn't cover his body up. And right then I saw that, I said, that could have been me, that could have been my friend. I actually cried and I saw Hashim Nzinga in Ferguson and that's why I'm here at his funeral today, because this man is the one that changed my life and made me sign up for the new Black Panther Party. And other black groups had come here too to pay their respects, including Grandmaster Jay, leader of the NFAC, the Not Effing Around Coalition. everything of the almighty Black Panthers today and the past, but we're something else. We are the period at the end of your sentence. Grandmaster Jay, hello. I'm Krishnan Guru Murthy from British Television, Channel 4. Um, 
What is your goal? The protection of the black race, the policing of the black race, the education of weapons of the black race. We want a seat at the table in the UN too. We want to have someone that gets upset when one of us is brutalized. We don't want prayers and we don't want, we want another country, even if it's one that we build. Do you think that the anti-racist protest, the Black Lives Matter movement, do you think that is a sort of a, a naive way to try and bring about change? I would not say it's naive. I would say that it satisfies the definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. And they can continue to do what they want to do. They haven't achieved anything yet. If they had, we wouldn't exist. Do you think African Americans should be arming themselves now? There are 432 million guns in this country right now. That means there's more guns here than there are people. Should they be arming themselves? They've already armed themselves. The question then becomes, how do we equalize the playing field? Then we too have armed ourselves. We're meeting power with power. The Second Amendment famously says a well-regulated militia is necessary to the security of a free state. Within weeks, America could be staring at disputed election results, with opposing and heavily armed militias both believing they have right on their side and are prepared to fight for it.